Chapter 20. And it came to pass that on one of those days, as he taught the people in the temple and preached the gospel, the chief priests and the scribes came upon him with the elders, and spake unto him, saying, Tell us, by what authority doest thou these things? Or who is he that gave thee this authority? And he answered and said unto them, I will also ask you one thing, and answer me. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we say... If we shall say from heaven, he will say, Why then believed ye not him not? But if we say of men, all the people will stone us, for they be persuaded that John was a prophet. And they answered that they could not tell whence it was. And Jesus said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. Then began he to speak to the people this parable. A certain man planted a vineyard and led it forth to husbandmen, and went into a far country for a long time. And at the season he sent a servant to the husbandman, that they should give him of the fruit of the vineyard. But the husbandman beat him and sent him away empty. And again he sent another servant, and they beat him also and entreated him shamefully and sent him away empty. And again he sent a third, and they wounded him also and cast him out. Then said the Lord of the vineyard, What shall I do? I will send my beloved son. It may be they will reverence him when they see him. But when the husbandmen saw him, they reasoned among themselves, saying, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, that the inheritance may be ours. So they cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. What therefore shall the Lord of the vineyard do unto them? He shall come and destroy these husbandmen and shall give the vineyard to others. And when they heard it, they said, God forbid. And he beheld them and said, What is this then that is written? The stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner. Whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. And the chief priests and the scribes the same hour sought to lay hands on him, and they feared the people, for they perceived that he had spoken this parable against them. And they watched him and sent forth spies, which should feign themselves just men, that they might take hold of his words, that so they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor. And they asked him, saying, Master, we know that thou sayest and teachest rightly. Neither acceptest thou the person of any, but teachest the way of God truly. Is it lawful for us to give tribute unto Caesar, Caesar or no? But he perceived their craftiness, and said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Shew me a penny. Whose image and superscription hath it? And they answered and said, Caesar's. And he said unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which be Caesar's, and unto God the things which be God's. And they could not take hold of his words before the people, and they marveled at his answer, and held their peace. Then came to him certain of the Sadducees, which deny that there is any resurrection, and they asked him, saying, Master, Moses wrote unto us, If any man's brother die, having a wife, and he died without children, that his brother should take his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. There were therefore seven brethren, and the first took a wife and died without children, and the second took her to wife, and he died childless. And the third took her, and in like manner the seven also. And they left no children and died, and last of all the woman died also. Therefore in the resurrection, whose wife of them is she? For seven had her to wife. And Jesus answering said unto them, The children of this world marry, and are given in marriage. But they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world, and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry, nor are given in marriage. Neither can they die any more, for they are equal unto the angels, and are the children of God, being the children of the resurrection. Now that the dead are raised, even Moses shewed at the bush, when he called the Lord the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, for he is not a God of the dead, but of the living, for all live unto him. Then certain of the scribes answering said, Master, thou hast well said. And after that they durst not ask him any question at all. And he said unto them, How, shall, how say they that Christ is David's son? And David himself saith in the book of Psalms, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. David therefore called him Lord, how is he then his son? Then in the audience of all the people he said unto his disciples, Beware of the scribes which desire to walk in long robes, 
and love greetings in the markets and the highest seats in the synagogues and the chief rooms at feasts, which devour widows' houses and for a shoe make long prayers, the same shall receive greater damnation. In this chapter, I want to deal with something that we sort of dealt with before, but I want to deal a little more emphasis on it this time, and it's called the parable of the wicked husbandman. A man planted a vineyard and then journeyed to a far country, and he turned the vineyard over to some husbandmen. And then in due season, he sent servants back to get some of the fruit. And the husbandman dealt roughly with the servant and sent him away with nothing. And that process was repeated several times. And finally, the owner of the vineyard sent his beloved son figuring that these people should reverence his son. But the wicked husbandman decided that in order to perpetuate their ownership, their use of the vineyard, without due respect for the man who actually planted it or made it available to them, they would kill the son and in essence try to steal, because he's the heir, see to it that they could keep the vineyard for their own paying nothing for it and having all the benefits from it. And which they did. They turned him out of the vineyard, they killed the son, and then the Savior asked in this parable of the Pharisees, Sadducees, rulers of the temple, elders, what would he do when he came, when the owner came himself? He would kick the husbandman out turn it over to other people. And their response was, God forbid. And the reason was, they understood that this applied to them. This, They were the wicked husbandmen. God was the one who had planted the vineyard, which was the beautiful, rich soil of Israel, which could produce all kinds of things, and which the Lord had even promised that he would temper the weather so it would be the most beautiful, most productive place on earth had turned it over to his leaders, the Phar not the Pharisees and the Sadducees, but righteous men, to lead and guide the people. And these people were proving to be morally corrupt, unworthy of leadership, crafty, thieves, liars, adulterers, the whole show, all just terrible. He had sent his prophets, they were his servants, to get the fruit, which was to, to call the people to repentance, to do what they were supposed to do, to live righteously. And they had treated all of these prophets unrighteously. Some they had thrown out, some they had murdered even. But all of them they had treated unrighteously. Finally, he sends his son, which is Jesus. And they don't want to have anything to do with him either. So they kill him. And here he's talking in a prophetic manner of, of his death that's going to happen three days down the, down the road. From the time he's talking to them, he knows these men are trying to kill him. They're trying to find a way to accuse him to the governor of something they can kill him for. And he declares unto them what will happen to them. And at the end, the Savior asks the question and answers it. What then will the Lord of the vineyard, God, do to the wicked husbandmen? And the answer is, he will destroy them and give the vineyard to others. And their answer is, God forbid. They recognize that they are the wicked husbandmen. They recognize that he understands that they're trying to kill him, and that they'll keep on trying until they do. And he tells them that in the end, it will cost them their, their lives, maybe their eternal lives as murderers.